Hi, welcome to Do This, Not That. I'm Sue Self, licensed clinical social worker and behavioral health liaison manager for BJC Behavioral Health. Today, we're trying to understand and feel confident and competent when providing care for young patients who exhibit defiance or engage in control struggles with us. These kinds of issues can be time-consuming, frustrating, and make the day seem to go on forever. In this module, I'm hoping to give you ideas that may help you and your patient to experience a better day with less negative energy. You want to provide complete, compassionate, exceptional care. This can be really hard to do when it seems that you're providing it for someone who insists on getting in your way. Let's think about defiance as distinctly different from resistance or non-compliance. Resistance can be related to anxiety or fear. Here, we're talking about defiance and control. Do a check on what's going on. Defiance is about a style or a way of responding to situations. It could be, but is not necessarily fear-based. Look for a persistent pattern of wanting to be in control or refusing as a way to be in charge of situations, regardless of what is going on. Are the behaviors you're seeing really about what's going to happen, or is it about who's in charge? Do you get the feeling that it's going to be a long day with this patient? That's a clue that points to defiance. Defiance and control issues largely appear in toddlers ages two to four and in kids in their preteens and early teen years. These are the kids who challenge us or create confrontation or openly and boldly challenge and resist authority. In ages two to four, they've learned the no word. Now they're using it to test their environment and try to maintain their prestigious place in the world. Little ones resist restriction. Defiance is an attempt to keep the known world the way it was. In adolescence, with emerging new mental and physical abilities, preteens and teens want to have a say about things. When the world feels out of control, like it can when children are hospitalized, they want to control what happens and have their opinions considered. This desire, mixed with a lack of experience and a not yet fully developed brain, results no. in defiance and control issues. But a child at any age can have this kind of style. As health caregivers, in the moment of trying to provide care, you can't and don't really need to find out why the patient is defying you. The key is to respond so that the patient's physical and mental health needs are addressed. Focus instead on the intent or what the behaviors do for the patient. Never, never, never say that a child is a particular type of person. You can say that the behavior is rude or that the action was mean, but never say that the kid is rude or mean or some other negative identity tag. Avoid using positive labels as well. For example, you're so smart or you're a good boy. Don't allow your emotional response to the child the patient's reputation, or past difficult interactions set the stage for getting through the next one. Don't take the child's words personally. Don't avoid or ignore a patient's anger or threats. Don't challenge the patient or respond in kind by matching her attitude. Don't participate by calling names or getting physical. Don't raise your voice, argue, or answer in any way that is confrontational, demeaning, insulting, or abusive. Don't create rewards and consequences on the fly. Doing so in the midst of defiance is an unsuccessful strategy. Avoid power struggles with the child. They're always lose-lose situations. Okay, Sarah, it's time to go to physical therapy. Um, no. What do you mean, no? You have to go. Your doctor said so. I'm not going. That's all. Um, yeah, you are. It's time. Well, you can't make me. Are we going to replay yesterday? I went to therapy yesterday. You weren't even here. No, but you made a big fuss about it and you had to go anyway, didn't you? I'm pretty sure you can't make me. Get up. We're going. Now. Leave me alone. I'm not going. Fine. I'll just tell the doctors that you wouldn't go.
What's up? Leave me alone. I'm just checking on you. I hate you. Jason, you can't talk to me that way. I don't care. I wish you were dead. Jason, why would you say that to me? You apologize. That was just plain mean. No. I hate you. I swear. I'm not going to let you talk to me that way. I'm going to leave, and when I get back, I want an apology. When the strategies you came in with are not successful or are not working, rather than upping the ante or escalating consequential threats, know that you've recognized something important. Give yourself a graceful exit wherein no one has won or lost. Like, we're going to take a break right now. I'll be back. Give the patient an out with dignity as well. Leaving them feeling as if they've lost some battle sets the stage for the next one. Confer, consult with the team about alternative effective strategies and debrief on those that didn't work so well. Does a child have a behavioral health plan? If not, consider initiating one, especially if more procedures are needed. Prepare. You are likely to know which patients have this kind of style before you go in. Get strategies from others. Make some decisions ahead of time. Choose your battles. Consider alternatives, now or later, or does it really need to be done? Think about offering the patient a selection of choices that are acceptable to you. Giving a child control over some parts of it can get cooperation from her. Think through your approach. Be clear about what you need to do or want from the patient and prepare to start positively and respectfully. Set up opportunities for or notice times when the patient behaves well. Remind the patient of past successes. If a potentially defiance-provoking event for the patient is about to occur, you can remind him about times when he made a good choice. Separate the inappropriate behavior from the patient in a, I hate the behavior, but I believe in your ability to get through this kind of way. Set positive limits. Instead of saying, don't talk to me that way, say, when you're ready to speak more nicely, I can go get you that Coke. So I have Sarah in 15 for this shift. She's been pretty difficult. Several of us have had difficulty with her. Michelle got really frustrated when she wouldn't go down for therapy. Do we have any ideas? I know that she never made it to therapy. Can't keep that up. Do we know what doesn't work? I know that Sarah likes to have a say in everything. When the kids are getting ready to play a game, Sarah works really hard at arranging it to her liking. Maybe there's something about that. I think so. She seemed pretty satisfied that Michelle got so upset. I think that was the intent. Not really about PT, you know? Okay. Well, no battles today. No one wins and no one loses. Thanks. Hi, Sarah. It's time to go to physical therapy. Um, no. I know. It's not the best part of your day, is it? But it's time. I'm not going. That's all. Well, let's see. You do need to get physical therapy today, so let's figure out something together, okay? I just don't want to. Let's just skip it, shall we? Well, it looks like you're not ready for it right now. How about I give you a little time to get ready? What I'll do is I'll give you 15 minutes to get ready and I'll be back. Not going. After PT, how about we go pick out a DVD? I know we got new ones in today. Thanks for getting ready. I'll be back. Right about now, you're deciding if she's going to drop the defiance and cooperate or not. If she does, compliment her on it and possibly offer her more choices. If she doesn't and persists with defiance, it's time to make an exit. Are you ready to go? I went to therapy yesterday. Leave me alone. I'm not going. Well, listen, I'm going to go do a couple other things. I'm going to let physical therapy know that you're not ready right now. They're going to come up here and make a plan to get it done. In this moment, while the patient has not gone to PT, 
It may seem as if she's won, but here's what did happen. A power struggle was avoided. The nurse made a plan and tested it out. And now we know two things. The patient does not respond to the offer of giving her input or a reward for cooperating. And it's clear that we need to revisit expectations and consequences. What's up? Leave me alone. I'm just checking on you. I hate you. Why do you say that? I don't know. It's not a nice thing to say. Are you upset about something? I don't care. I wish you would just, just go and have a car accident or something. I don't like it when people talk to me like that, especially you. What do you know? You don't know anything. I know you've been really great to people. Like yesterday at lunch when you were cheering up Elizabeth. Remember that? No. I do. It made me really happy when you made her smile like that. I think that's the Jason that's really inside there. Want to tell me what's going on? If you're ready to talk like the real Jason, I could get your snack and we could talk for a while. A patient who is defiant and controlling can test our patients, use up time, and disrupt the day, but many times it can be managed or diffused. Remember, it's not personal. Children, like the rest of us, want to influence and control what happens in their world. Sometimes the choices they make get in their own way. Your observations are very important, whether it's blood pressure or behavior. Using what you notice and working to develop effective strategies can make everyone's experience more positive. Remember, you don't need to be a psychiatric professional to help a patient in this situation. You just need to know what to do. Thanks for watching.